What is up? We're back with another episode of Modern Meta Breakdown. How's it going? It's been a little while. Hope you guys have been enjoying the 2019 meta. So this episode is going to be a little bit different than previous ones because we're going to talk about kind of the rise of newer decks and the fall of the newer decks, if you will, because 2019 has been a little chaotic. And the main reason it's been so chaotic is because we've had two major sets come out that have had huge impacts on the meta. Uh, one of the sets, of course, I'm referring to is War of the Spark, which came out on April 25th of this year. And then we had the Modern Horizons, which came out right after that on June 13th. So the meta was still developing and trying to adjust to the changes from War of the Sparks. And it kind of has had a major effect on a lot of decks. A lot of cards were able to get ported into specific decks. And then people were adjusting to that. And then, oh, Modern Horizons, look at all these other new cards. So we're going to talk a little bit about kind of those adjustments and how things have changed and the rise up of specific decks. So the first one that we're going to talk about, and again, this is going to be a little bit of a different video. Um, instead of highlighting just one deck, we're going to kind of do a quick rundown. So let's hop in and talk about the blue-white control because that has changed and it's one of the decks that has seen a bit of a shakeup in the numbers of the cards that are in the deck and how the deck might be running now because of the specific. Now, this list is a little bit older, right? This is, of course, if you can see up at the top there, it was uh, coming out on the 5th there, so that was May, but this is one of the events that took place right after um, the set came out, War of the Spark. So we see people trying to adjust and find new slots for these cards, and you can see kind of adjustments. Uh, some of the big ones is our Planeswalker list, which previously a lot of the blue-white control lists were running Hero of Dominario, and then we had Jace Mind Sculptor. And now it's like, oh, wait a minute. I don't have to run Search for content anymore because I get a Planeswalker that does that? Plus, it prevents you from drawing extra cards. That seems really good. My opponent doesn't draw more cards. Static abilities seem awesome. So people started running this. Initially, we saw like a four of. Now people have kind of adjusted it to three, depending on how it goes. Same thing for Teferi the Time Raveler. Amazing card. Um, I'm even running it in Infect, running the Bant Infect list now, because it's just such an, a powerful card, basically saying... My opponent doesn't get to cast spells on their turn. It seems really good. So another three slot coming into the list here. And all these cards that I'm going to be referring to are from that War of the Spark. So Narset, Teferi, Time Raveler, really, really good. Three drop Planeswalkers added to the list. Um, you get to be able to cast your cards during your opponent's turn. And then you can bounce something and draw a card. Um, you can bounce an artifact, creature, enchantment, seems pretty powerful there. The other thing that we saw was a little bit more of just kind of, nope, you're not going to do anything, All right? Dovin's Veto. So adjusting the lists, previously we've seen those fluctuations between how much hard control lists are going to be running, and now it's kind of going back to, you mean I can counter something and don't have to worry about the counter wars that come about? Counter target spell, right? That seems pretty good, all right? Pretty good. So non-creature means like, you're basically running into gate. But there's so many non-creature spells in modern. This is awesome. And being able to just kind of shut it down without having to worry about it seems really good. So that was kind of a big rise up of the blue-white control list, being able to run this sort of list. Now, if you want a more in-depth of how the meta has shifted, because all the decks have been skewed. These are normal decks that we see, blue-white control, things like that, Tron, Jun, whatever decks that have existed previously all became weirdly stretched because of the meta and the decks that we're going to talk about. So I'm going to highlight a couple of them and the reason why. This was before the Modern Horizons came out and skewed everything. So the meta was adjusting, oh look at all these cool new cards, these planeswalkers, how can we adapt, how can we adjust to it? That's what's going to be happening. So now let's hop over and talk about the Phoenix list. Now they are still trying to exist post banning because at this point in time of the posting of this video, we have seen some bannings take place. One of the major ones is Faithless Looting no longer legal and modern, but I just wanna quickly highlight 
why mono red was so good and why it existed. I'm not going to do a full in-depth about the deck, but just kind of quick synopsis for people in case they were wondering what was happening in 2019 for modern. So as you can see, it's just kind of full of these little short, quick cast spells. Um, one of the ones, the Finale of Promise, really sweet one to be added into the, the list here. As you can see, you've got to be able to cast spells from your graveyard. It's basically just kind of recycling stuff. And if you're playing a prowess style deck, all right, you're getting Bedlam Reveler, you're playing Swift Spear, you're playing Soul Scar Mage, and you can try to cast three spells to return your Phoenix from the graveyard very very quick very aggro and people were trying to deal with it and say okay how can i get graveyard hate against phoenix but the graveyard hate doesn't work as well because it's prowess deck it's just like pure aggro burst if you're more focused on the phoenix you're dead to the swift spears you're dead to the soul scar mage and you can see they can sit here gut shot you fork bolt lightning bolt and they just cast all these spells and then just swing in so it's very quick very aggressive deck and hard to deal with the kind of slower list was this is it phoenix um it was also developing around this time uh people were running the pyromancer's ascension at that time um and that was kind of really adjusting very similar to the last list but you do get access to blue so you get thing in the ice you do get access to a little bit more cantrips of, of, in there with sleight of hand serum vision things like that um you're still running finale you know still running faith is looting doesn't exist anymore so we don't have to worry about it but i do want to highlight just kind of the change from people trying out Pyromancer's Ascension, and then they adjust it and go, ooh, Modern Horizons has come out. Look at this cool card, all right? And Aria of Flame is an awesome enchantment. Three costs in there, so a little bit more expensive than Pyromancer's Ascension, but it does allow you extra win conditions in a way uh, because you're casting so many spells again, right? You're doing your sleight of hands, you're doing your serums, you know, your Faithless Looting, Thought Scours, things like that. But this time around, you're giving your opponent 10 life and whenever you cast a spell you get to put a counter on it for every time there's a counter on it you're going to deal damage to your opponent so i'm going to cast one spell boom that deals one damage to you i'm going to cast my second spell this turn now there's two counters on it you're going to take two damage oh here's my third spell now you're going to take three damage it just ch -ch 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 builds up and you know you can kind of really chunk somebody away there and again you're all about kind of getting those three spells in a turn so you can get arc light phoenix back so just kind of a nice power up way to go and again that's you had more ways to deal with this deck uh, than the mono red because it's kind of shorter more narrow effects and you can kind of help target those narrow effects um, but that brings us to modern horizons was printed new cards again coming out the meta was kind of adjusting okay here's all these new things wow turns out phoenix really good you know it's really powerful effects we're trying to deal with this and then Ah, oh, Bridge Vine. So a creature got printed known as Hogak. And they go, free spells seem good, right? Everybody likes free spells. You know, that, they've always worked out. Now, I like that people are at Wizards are pushing design and trying different things. This one was just a little too pushed, if you ask me. All right, you look at the cost and you're like, what are you talking about, man? This thing costs seven mana to cast. He's an 8-8. Eight, eight, um, and you can't even spend mana to cast it, so I don't know, even know what you're worried about. No, but you can convoke it, and you can be able to cast it from your graveyard. It's an 8-8 eight, eight with Trample. So it's kind of one of those, I'm going to fill my graveyard up, right? So I'm going to be able to use Stitcher Supplier. I'm going to be able to use Neonate to be able to throw Vengevine or Hogak in there. I'm going to use um, Karen Feeder as like a sack outlet here. I've got Blood Gas. I've got Gravecrawler. These cards that can come back from my graveyard so I can be able to cast Vantage Vine. I can be able to convoke them to cast Hogak. I'm going to be able to kind of sack them with my Altar of Dimension to help kind of fuel my graveyard because I'm self-milling with this. Um, and then I'm going to take advantage of having a bridge from below in there. Now, guess what? Bridge from below got banned because this deck was too good. It was like, hey, how about 25 power on turn two, turn three. This seems pretty good for modern, right? Too good, too good. We gotta, we gotta deal with this. So Bridge from Below uh, gets banned out because they could just make a bunch of tokens and then they can be able to cast Hogak and they can just keep with this kind of self mill until they're feeling in a good spot. And then, they're, all right, cool. My tokens don't have haste. You're right. I have to wait a turn. But here's this, you know, 20 power on board. And I've got an 8-8 Trampler with this 20 power. Um, pass turn. 
and then you go, well, I don't have a board wipe, and I don't have any way to prevent myself from dying this turn or killing you. So I guess I pass it back, and you just kill me. And this significantly started warping the meta to the point where people were running Surgical's main board, they were running Rest in Peace, every list was running Leyline of the Void in the sideboard, pretty much. They were having like a four of in there, and things were getting crazy. So Bridge gets banned and people go oh, okay maybe things are good maybe we can get by um you know with, without having to worry about it and then they go you know i guess we don't really care about that i guess we'll have to do things the old-fashioned way you know let's kind of adjust it um if you guys are familiar with tree corn there some dredge list i've been running it you kind of put it in the battlefield it's got three counters on it and then you can basically self mill put two cards into your graveyard runs the same sort of package here's the blood gas grave crawlers um Seder wayfinder has now been added into the mix for even more self mill because uh well i don't have that package with making a bunch of zombies let's kind of help myself out here get some more creatures into the graveyard and it's the same sort of idea behind it is just i can overrun you with a bunch of low drop stuff um, it's got things like the lot list roll to kind of help accelerate that. I can discard my Hogak into the graveyard to be able to cast him. Um, it's got the Karen feeder, so I can be able to just kind of make him really big. Not as big as when you had all the zombie tokens, but still having the blood gas, having the grave crawler, scary, scary, scary. And then the big guy himself, Hogak. So he was dominating and tearing everything up, and they go, you know what? Turns out free spells are a little bit too good and they decided to give him the axe and say no more if you want to have fun with him go play legacy and he is showing up in legacy so they got rid of that they got rid of faithless looting as well and said we don't want degenerate graveyard stuff going on for a little while we've had that for pretty much the entire summer so let's let's cool our jets a, a little bit here. We'll get rid of both of those cards. And hey, all of you guys out there, you guys can be able to play with Stoneforge Mystic. So they unbanned Stoneforge Mystic. And now the meta is trying to kind of find its legs again, right? It's got its feet back and go, okay, where do I go here? How am I supposed to be running toward this finish line? Am I going to be fitting Stoneforge Mystic into existing decks? Am I going to be maybe making it work in its own style list? Am I just kind of trying to make it work? You know, how, how, what, what do I need to do to make this work? And if you were wondering, all the swords have shot up in price. So if you have those, now would be the time to flip them or use them, right? It's cool that people are trying to figure out how to use Stoneforge Mystic and how it works out best in there. Um, there are other decks that have cropped up and I will quickly highlight them. Um, because I don't want to spend as much time on these lists, but just want to show you just briefly, because I will be devoting a specific Modern Meta Breakdown video to this next deck, which is the Urza list. I'm a huge fan of this list. Um, started out kind of as this Grixis. There are still exists the Grixis list. There are also the four color versions of them. Um, both kind of have their pros and cons. The Grixis list does run the Goblin Engineer, which kind of helps accelerate how you're going to be doing things. Um, quickly, just quickly, I'll go over it because I feel like I'm gonna to spend too much time diving into it and I don't wanna do that. But another deck that started cropping up after Modern Horizons because of these two powerful cards, Goblin Engineer, two drop. It should seem like a familiar ability for anybody that is familiar with older magic and stuff like that. But uh, enters the battlefield, you get to search your library for an artifact card and put it into your graveyard. Why might that be beneficial? Well, you're playing Sword of the Meek. Does that kind of ring any bells? Sort of meek. Here we go. Got unbanned a while ago. Gives creature plus one, plus two. You can equip it for two, but whenever a one, one creature enters the battlefield under your control or comes into play, technically, you can return this from your graveyard and equip it onto that creature. So you can play things like Thopter Foundry and sack an artifact, gain a life and make a one, one Thopter and just lets you cycle through and keep getting that back from the graveyard and keep sacking it and keep getting it back and sack it and sack it. But you're like, how do you be able to get the mana to be able to do that? Well, that brings us to the other creature. Urza, the main man himself, Lord High Artificer. He costs four mana for it for one four, but when he enters battlefield, you get a zero zero artifact golem colorless creature guy. That's power and toughness is equal to the number of artifacts you control. You can tap 
any untapped artifacts that you control and add a blue mana. So you just keep tapping that Sword of Meek, sack it to Thopter Foundry, comes back. Tack it, doom, 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 go through. You could also pay five mana, shuffle your library, exile the top card, and until your end of turn, you can play that card without paying its mana cost. Sorry, end of the turn, not just your turn. But that's how it goes. You can be able to use the Goblin Engineer and be able to kind of tutor up and find that sword. Um, and then you could pay one red and sack an artifact to return target artifact with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it has that kind of extra power to save you and do different things like that if you need to. So that's kind of the Grixis list. I don't want to spend too much time. I just talk about the combo real quick just so people are aware. This is kind of more combo driven uh, than like the four color list that exists. Four color list, still really powerful, um, but does not just go all in on the Sword of Meek style. It does have it, but this allows it to kind of um, be able to whir. It's, you know, just has some really powerful cards that exist in, into it. And it's um, another one of those that's similar to the kind of powerful artifact decks of the past. Uh, it's kind of taken the lantern control decks and stretch them out into this newer, more powerful list. And I, you know, I'll talk more about these lists in particular when I do that video, but I don't want to spend too much time on it because this was kind of just a breakdown of what the meta has shaped up to be and how it's kind of been diverted and stretched because of these two powerful sets that came out in the summer of 2019. So if you are liking these videos, please consider hitting the follow, subscribes, all that kind of good stuff. Let me know in the comments below what decks you'd like me to talk about next. Again, we do have a lot of decks that are popping up that are trying to fit Stoneforge Mystic into the list. Jun has changed quite a bit since the new printings of things. Same thing with Tron. Tron has been updated. So I will be talking about all these different lists over the next coming weeks and months. But let me know below what decks you'd like to see first, second, third, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but you can see up above, down below, all the links where you can be able to find me. But if you guys enjoy the content, best way to help support is follow and subscribe. But that's going to do it for me with this episode of Modern Meta Breakdown. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you guys next game.